Hello and welcome to the FLW TV Nottingham Forest pre uh, takeover show. My name is George Harvey, your host for today, and I'm joined by a very special guest, Max Hayes, also known as Match Day. With Max, thank you for joining me, mate. Uh, no, no worries, George. It's good to be on. It's good to preview um, preview Forest Derby. Although it's not going well for Forest at the moment, <laughs> fingers crossed we'll be previewing something good, and, and obviously Forest can pick up three points on Saturday. But no, it's um, it's good to be on. It's good to talk. The roles have been reversed, haven't they? Because on <laughs> Saturday. It was uh, you interviewing me outside the city ground and your big mic, and uh, yeah, I'm interviewing exactly. now. So, uh, no, thank you for joining me. Uh, see if a few Forest fans join in the comments, but I'm going to be here for the next 20 minutes discussing all the things to do with Forest at the minute, all things Trent side and all things Gary Baldy Red. So let's get into it. So, at this point, start the season for Forest, four defeats from four, the first, well, the second time in 67 years. They've lost their first four games of the season. Max, you were at Stoke last week. Uh, 1-0 defeat. Good to see of Josh Tymon's second half strike. How would you sum up the atmosphere at the Bet365 Stadium that day? And just the whole mood around the club at the moment. Uh, the atmosphere was toxic, to be honest. Um, to be honest, George, I've, I've only ever been really... I mean, I've been supporting Forest since kind of early Billy Davis um, days in terms of when we kind of made that first playoff run with him. So I've never really had that much to smile about, of course, but I've never seen an away end kind of turn on a manager and probably a team that quickly, really, especially when we went 1-0 down. You see a lot of the time when Forrest have gone 1-0 down in the past with um, with managers like Sabri Lamucci, that they've motivated the team again and the fans have got behind them, but they didn't really, it was quite toxic, to be honest with you. Um, there was chance you're getting sacked in the morning, we're going down with the derby, a bit more explicit than that, but it, it, it just wasn't, it, it just wasn't that, it wasn't that nice to be involved in um, and to hear really because Forrest went from really the last time when fans were in stadiums pre-Covid times is with a great manager, Sabri Lamucci, with some attacking football. And when you went 1-0 down, I can remember when Forrest played Stoke on the Friday night and we went 1-0 yeah. down and came back to win, was it 3-2 in the end? And I can remember you just had that faith when Forrest went a goal down that we were going to bring it back and, and, and potentially go on and win the game. Now you don't, and I think fans really sense that. There's no connection at the moment with the club or the fans, I think, and COVID has probably contributed to that, um, although it, you know, it, 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 there is other things that, 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 that have contributed. Uh, Chris Hewton, I don't think he's got a connection with the Forest fans at all. He, he's one of the only managers I've really ever seen with Forest fans where there's any, even just small things that might, people might laugh at that no chant for him. That There just doesn't seem to be that much interest in him and and not getting behind him, which is bad because, you know, we need to get behind the manager and the team. However, the football at the moment, you know, the fans deserve deserve their say and, and, and deserve to say if, if obviously Hewton stays or goes. Mm. Obviously, the, the style of football is something that is often criticised under Chris Hewton by mm. Forest fans. Ryan Yates and Jack Cole back in midfield, that seems to be the biggest talking point. You know, what do you make of them as a duo? Um, I like Yatesy. I've always been kind of one of his biggest fans, really. Um, but I can understand why he's got the criticism in the last few weeks he has. Uh, I think potentially Cafu uh, is better in that partnership with Yates. Uh, you could see um, on Saturday uh, against Stoke, I thought those... I, I, to be honest, I thought the first half, actually, and, and fans potentially reading on Twitter and following it by social media will, will of course, disagree because of the scoreline. But the first half, Forrest didn't play too bad at all, really. Um, I thought we defended quite solidly. Um, I thought, you know, defensively we, we were quite sound. Other areas of attack we never really got going. And, of course, no shots on target says that as well in the first half. I think it was the first one we, was in the second. But, um, yeah, pretend, I mean, I'm not a big fan of that duo. I'd prefer to have uh, Garner, of course, in there for Derby. Um, I hope he plays. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he will. And hopefully with him in the middle and kind of a character as well. Forrester lacking a character. There's no identity either within the team. And I think you're lacking somebody like Michael Dawson. So I always thought Yatesy would be a bit of a character, but I just don't really see it on the pitch. So for me, someone like Garner to slot into to that midfield position, he'll kind of give that stability. But it, 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 I think he'll also motivate the team really and, and, and be quite a good captain kind of leader role. Yeah, it's a big signing. We'll talk about it later on. Yeah. One positive you could probably say, is Finn back. Yes. Young Ignore at right back. Really impressive against Wolves in midweek as well. He's been thrown into deep end almost, but you know what have you made of his performances? Because he played well at Stoke as well. Yeah, 
extremely good. And I think one thing that the Forest fans, in all fairness, did well, and, and, and especially against Stoke, I'm really not sure about the cup game because I wasn't there, but they really kind of motivated the young players and, and never really got on their back, even though they weren't happy with the football or potentially the manager. And getting quite frustrated with that, they, they almost... Um, showed support for the young players because it wasn't their fault. And Finn Bat did excellent, considering he's never really been out on loan before. I mean, the lad ideally needs like a League One, League Two loan uh, and, and and then to come back and, and, and slot into the team. But I thought he did brilliant. I thought his work rate was great. I thought the way he kind of controlled it. And and considering if you look on the other side um, during the Stoke game with Bong, is that, you know, you've got Bong, who's an, he's supposed to be an experienced championship player. And you've got Finn back on the other side that, again, has never really... Um, really played a proper championship game and, and, and never made a Forest League debut. So, but, uh, you know, and the differences were unreal. You look at Finn back and I thought, I thought he was excellent. I really did. I, I, and I thought he worked quite well. Um, and considering you Stoke had a lot of height on them uh, last Saturday, you know, they're a tall team, really strong team. And you watch them and especially when Forrest kept giving away set pieces and corners, which is one thing that, that, that really frustrated me. Stoke have got the height advantage and they capitalised on that and I'm surprised they didn't more. So Finn Back actually, considering he's quite a small lad as well, um, was quite strong and, and you didn't really notice that. So yeah, good start for him and, and I wouldn't be surprised if he plays against Derby either. Mm, Mr. Dorr, Finn Back has done great. We're getting so much experience from this. The Wolves game, uh, I think it was eight Nuri for Wolves at left back. Very good player. Yeah. Um, you've answered my question there about him potentially going out on loan. So just finally on on reaction, you know, where do you stand on Chris Shooter in the minute then? Because Forrest have got through a lot of managers in recent years. And I speak to Chris obviously a lot, impresses, yeah. etc. He is almost wanting that full strength squad or uh, get his own players in before he wants to be judged. But do you reckon new signs will help his cause or is it time for him to go? In your opinion, yeah, uh, it's a difficult one to be honest, George, because Forrest obviously sack a manager every year. Um, we're known for sacking managers. I'm kind of a big uh, critic, I don't really agree. A lot of pundits say it, um, constantly saying stability. And you watch kind of pundits on uh, different shows or talking about Forrest, and uh, these are pundits that don't really watch a lot of the games, but will sometimes say, Oh, well, Forrest needs stability. and Stability is key within a club, it is, but stability comes in many different ways. And if Forrest has sat bottom and we've lost five in a row and the manager's football and the fans are turning against him, then there's an easy option there that can solve some of the problems. But all the problems aren't down to Chris Hewton. Um, You know, there's a lot of on and off the pitch issues, potentially need some more players uh, before the transfer window closes. I don't think he'll get many um, mm. apparently I, I, someone told me yesterday and I, 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 I don't know if, if, if you heard this George but uh, Dave Murphy was on Talk Sport yesterday um, and he was kind of talking about um, that they're fully behind Chris Hewton uh, and that uh, he expects kind of one two three maybe players before the, the transfer window ends so I don't think it's going to make a massive difference but who knows because Garner could slot into the team and, and play against Derby and Forrest could really kick start the season even if it was a nil-nil draw, you know, something that just you, you can build um, from. So, I don't know, George, really. It, it's a difficult one to answer. Personally, if he loses against Derby, he's got to mm. go. Um, if I was on the hierarchy, I would have probably considered a change by now. Uh, and even just, I, I kind of put it on Twitter that giving it somebody like Andy Reid or Gary Brazil or, or just someone with a, a new face, really, to lift the team, the team needs motivating and especially... Uh, before a big game against Derby, because my fear is on Saturday and it could well happen. I hope it doesn't. And it, I think we're maybe a little bit lucky that Derby don't have a full strength squad and they've obviously got issues at the moment. But I think if Derby were potentially like they were a few years ago and, and going for the playoffs, we could get you know a 4 5 nil spanking. And, and you've seen before when, when that's happened that um, <laughs> Billy Davis has been sacked on the Monday morning. So it's a weird one, isn't it? I, I think. Who knows? But I think, yeah, it, it probably is time for a change. However, you know, I think a lot of Forest fans will still get behind the team against Derby because it's a big clash. Uh, I find it weird that some Forest fans will want Forest to lose against Derby, so he goes. I mean, that just doesn't show that you're a Forest fan to me at all. <clears> so I reckon, I reckon if we, if, if we could get us on Saturday, it could kickstart the season. But if we don't, then uh, then I think it will be time for a change, definitely. And hopefully, they've lined up a replacement as well, so we're not kind of waiting. Mm. This this derby game on Saturday reminds me of when Saka was under pressure and that uh, Osborne goal in the 90th minute basically saved him for 
a couple of weeks. I get that vibe. Um, Forest, Forest, I want stability, but I've never seen such poor game management. We'll touch on Derby in a minute, but first, transfers. A slow start to summer, really. Uh, four signings, struggled to get targets in. Seen linked with many players being linked, but Forest have been left frustrated. Um, Max, I, I think I know the answer to this, but where would you want to strengthen before... I think Max may have just dipped out quickly. We'll join him back in, in just a second. So, thank you for all your comments. I'll ask Dan's question in a minute. But yes, Forrest, I've struggled to bring in players this summer. I've seen linked with many, many players, um, bids being put in and not many uh, being accepted. Uh, Max, you're good. Yeah, sorry, yeah. George. I had a bit of a difficulty then. I don't know what happened. I think it was. That's uh, all right, mate. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, That's fine. Sorry. That's fine. No, I was just saying, um, obviously, struggled to get players in this summer. A lot of targets have been lined up, but only four have arrived. Chris Hutton has been frustrated in bringing players in. Um, if you were Chris or the recruitment team, who would you or where would you look to strengthen for the uh, window closing in five days? Um, God, yeah, it's five days, isn't it? Definitely in the fullback positions, of course. Um, ideally, I think a left back and a right back. Um, probably striker as well, to be honest, George. Uh, we need a man that can score goals. I think Graben's lacking confidence. Uh, but then again, fans could argue that he's not getting the service. And if you give Lewis Graben and potentially Lyle Taylor the service, they're kind of players that will score 20 goals a season for you. And you saw with Graben under Lamucci. Kind of mm. pre-COVID times, he was he kind of broke the record, didn't he, for for Forest most goal in a season? Um, I think it was uh, Robbie Earnshaw that that had the record before. So yeah, potentially striker, but definitely fullback. So I, I think also, and I know I mentioned about James Garner coming in, but potentially an, another character as well, someone that's really championship proven and whatever position that is really that can take that captain's armband and really motivate the team on the pitch because there's only so much Chris Hutton can do off the pitch and of course when he's on the um sidelines in the in the in the technical area so a player on the pitch to motivate the players would be good and just a leader in the um dressing room I think we're missing even somebody like Michael Dawson and even though Dawson didn't play much the last few seasons he was behind the scenes and because he was one of the players and he'd speak to them and I'm Surprised he didn't obviously take on um, coaching with Forrest, but he's gone into punditry. I, I think somebody like him and, and a real character uh, and, and proven and potentially someone that knows the club. Hence why I think if Forrest um, did make a change of manager, George, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Andy Reid was given maybe a proper crack at it. Um, I, I, I get that he's obviously doing the academy stuff at the moment. And he might not want to, but at least for a few games, caretaker charge, somebody like him would be really good to almost motivate the team and, and, and help Forrest kind of get over that line. I, th I think we are lacking a character, definitely, George. Uh, and, and you can see that on the pitch. Um, and I thought I thought as well, kind of, I've stayed all, pretty much still full-time uh, against Stoke as well. And the fans were kind of clapping the players off and it was only really loud, Taylor and a few others that did. And kind of management had their head down and walked down the t off the tunnel, whereas... You know, look at somebody like Lamucci and he, he, he was always kind of clapping the fans and, and coming over and even maybe apologising if Forrest uh, played poorly. So we're lacking characters on and off the pitch. So something there would be to strengthen, but definitely striker and fullbacks. Yeah, Sabri's post match interview was always quite uh, entertaining. He didn't mind swearing, which was. Uh, to yeah, I remember that. And Philip phrase, Montagna mate. did a similar thing. And Philip Montagna did a similar thing. Yeah. It was, it was funny because of Robin Chipperfield. It was funny because he had twice in like four years for doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now. Um, it would only be right to plug a transfer exclusive from this morning. You might have seen on my Twitter, but Max Lowe from Sheffield United looks to be closing uh, on a move to Forest on loan. I've seen much of Max Lowe. What would you make of that sign? It's a left back first and foremost. So, yeah, I, mean, I could probably well, do a job at the minute. Yeah, any left back at the moment, George, I think a lot of Forest fans will appreciate. So, to be honest, no, I haven't seen much of him recently, but uh, again, it, it, it's a sign. It, it, it's going to be a loan, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be yeah. a loan. So, I mean, that's another loan. I mean, I, I've, I've always got a bit of a funny thing about kind of loan players, whether they're actually committed to the club that much. But I don't think it always kind of depends on the player. So, yeah, we we need a left back. So I'll take anyone really at the moment, George. Yes. Talk Forest TV. We're going to, he's read my mind. Can you see any departures? Um, you talk about characters and there's two players this summer who have dominated the headlines in terms of outgoings. One of them being Joe Worrell. He is the definition of a character at Nottingham Forest. Um, plenty of links with 
West Ham, Brentford, um, Burnley, but still yet, and Southampton. They've all seemed to move on to different targets. Um, I suppose two questions, really. Can you see anyone coughing up, you know, £10 million to Warrell in the final five days of the window? And if so, would it be, well, how big of a blow would it be? Because Forest fans seem to be, well, if we get decent money for him and reinvest in quality players, then it won't matter too much. What's your stance on Warrell's potential departure? Yeah, I mean, Warrell would be a uh, kind of a big loss to Forest, but he's linked with clubs every window. I mean, you'd think he's been linked with Burnley for the past four years, to be honest with you, George. Uh, and, and it seems like clubs really don't kind of match the um, the value that kind of Forrest put out for him. So, yeah, potentially there's a high chance I do think he'll go. But whether it's... I, I don't think it'll be in this window. I think if it's likely, it could be at kind of January time. Uh, because whether, it, like, like you said, a team's going to cough up kind of £10 million pounds for him is... Another question, really. Um, but obviously, Joe's injured at the moment, reportedly uh, injured, of course. So we'll have to see kind of if, 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 if he's back uh, for Derby. But somebody like him, again, he is a character in the team. And you saw him kind of, he, he went out on loan, of course, to Rangers, didn't he, a few years ago and, and came back and was just a different player. It was completely yeah. a different player. And for me, that's why loaning young players out is so important because Joe came back, he slotted into the team. And the other thing with Joe is that he, he, he cares about Forest, you know. He's a he, he, he is a true red. He's a Forest fan, family of Forest fans, and he has been with Forest for a long time. So he really understands kind of the values of the club and and, and the way the fans want Forest to play. And I think he kind of wears the shirt with pride as well. And and sometimes you don't get that with a lot of players. So it's nice to see that. So we'll definitely miss him if he does go. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if he went in January, to be honest. Mm. And obviously the other one is Brennan Johnson, who. Did excellent at Lincoln last season on loan. He's come back this season, started really well. Uh, pre-season was brilliant. Coventry, that run, which Lyle Taylor called him Speedy Gonzalez for, which was a fair uh, comparison. But he's gone off the ball since then, but undoubtedly a very talented player. Um, Brentford are the ones who've been strongly linked with him. There's talks of a new deal that's not yet to, you know, a breakthrough's yet to be made. Um, again, a similar question. How important is it to keep hold of Brennan Johnson, especially for a Forest side at the minute who are lacking so much, you know, quality and creativity going forward? And, you know, how much, if he was to be sold, would you want for him? Yeah, again, it's an interesting one person. I'd like to see how kind of Brennan Johnson are doing a really championship proven side um, and, and championship experience. I think sometimes the players around him at Forest at the moment aren't kind of helping him uh, bring his real quality out. Uh, but but again, he, he's that player that um, runs and stuff. He just seems to go for it and he's really hungry for the ball. And then that's great to see. Um, I think that it would be a bigger loss than Worrell, to be honest with you. I think Forest fans would be more disappointed because Worrell has been at the club a long time. Uh, and it, I think Forest fans were expecting him to go one day. Brennan Johnson, on the other hand, really has only kind of played a uh, this is his first full season that he's going to probably feature in, in, in the start and 11. So he, he needs to stay, in my opinion, and at, at least one more season. You don't know what's going on sometimes behind the scenes and that Forrest could be really struggling financially, uh, you know, with post-COVID and, 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 all, and all kind of those effects. So who knows that Forrest might need to sell somebody to kind of bring in a few funds to to free up um, signings and things. So if, if there was someone that was going to go, it, it, I, I said the likelihood he'd be Worrell more, but i definitely say keep hold of Brennan Johnson because when he gets the ball, I just think the way he kind of goes about himself. And I also think because he's come from the academy and with his dad as well, kind of obviously playing for Forrest and, and, and being a proven footballer, is that um, I think he's just got a, a bag of potential. And I think if we can keep hold of him, then we could get double the amount of money next season. Yeah, it, it it does strike me as a proper Brentford signing. It's the type of player they always look to go for. Dan W has made his stance clear. Hutton out, Hayes and Harby in. <laughs> we'll see about that. Um, well, I experienced well, enough, Dan. <laughs> um, well, it's the big one this Saturday. East Berlin's Derby time. Derby County away. It only seems like a few months ago, well, it probably was a few months ago, that Colin Cousin Richards um, scored that volley and pushed Blackett, was it, in the face and ran off celebrating and yeah. James Garner scored. Um, East Berlin's Derby time. Um, at the start of the season, I suppose all the Forest fans pretty much were laughing at Derby. Um, they were in a bit of a state off the pitch, still are. Been able to make a few signings, but not groundbreaking ones. But Wayne Rooney, I think, uh, Wayne Rooney side in the league have only lost once, so they've got off to an all right start. Um, what's your what's your overriding feeling 
going to this weekend. I'm sure you'll be there amongst three other three thousand other Forest fans. I'll be there mm. on the other side of the pitch watching. Um, what's your feeling going to this? Well, straight away, I think a lot of Forest fans are going for the experience of Derby Day more than really uh, the football potentially at the moment. But like I said earlier, George, you know, Forest could get a scrappy kind of nil-nil, one-one draw. It could really kickstart something. I think that I think Forest fans have a little bit more faith now because I always think with Derby games is that form was thrown out the window. I can remember when Forest had kind of Dougie Freeman and Derby were up there with I think it was Steve McLaren at the time and Forest were down there struggling with Fawaz times and embargoes and Forest went and kind of won one nil. I can remember Nelson Oliveira scored it. It was a, it was a, it was a great night. That was it was a Friday night as well actually. So yeah. fingers crossed Forest can repeat something um, like that on obviously on on, on Saturday, but. I think the overriding emotion that Forest fans will have is that we need a win, otherwise the manager will go. And I always think it's quite disappointing if a manager does go after Derby, um, considering I think it's a little bit embarrassing uh, and that Derby fans will probably try and take advantage of it. But then again, you know, we could go out on Saturday and Hewton could surprise Rooney and surprise everybody watching and could go really go for it and, and, and could go, you know, really attacking. I don't think he will. I think it'll be a similar team to kind of um, a few few weeks ago, um, so, and, and again against Stoke. So who knows, George? But in terms of overriding emotion, it's probably more nerves than anything because I feel that we could be in for a uh, maybe a bit of a uh, two or three nil. Yeah, it, it could be. Well, as your prediction, I was going to ask you a prediction in a minute, but if it's two <laughs> or three nil, I, I best not ask. Um, yeah. There's obviously going to be changes from the Wolves game because they're not going to play. Four hundred twenty-three players at defence, but one man who could keep his place, and this is Brad uh, W. Martin's question, is Ethan Horvath. Um, he's been, it was to be fair, a very surprising signing because not many people thought for any of the goalkeeper when he came in. Mm. But he's really impressed uh, in the two cup games he's played, and after the game the other night, Chris was saying um, he's given me a headache, and you know he's been excellent. And I know he conceded four goals the other night, but it could have been, it literally could have been seven or eight without him. Um, Bree Samba, on the other hand, has made a few mistakes to start this season, and it hasn't he? So, you know, if you're a manager, who would you start this weekend? Uh, I'd give Horvath a chance because I think that Samba's a little bit too overconfident, thinking he's always got that kind of number one place, um, yeah. and, you, and and you can see that. And a few mistakes, why not? On, on, and honestly, change it up. And I think a lot of the time, even though Samba is a character, uh, I, I think in terms of the team, is that a lot of it can kind of root from the goalkeeper. Uh, and that you see a lot of goalkeepers are kind of leaders, leaders on the pitch. So potentially bringing Horvath in would be it'd, 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 it'd be a great kind of change. So potentially, yeah, George, I, I would. I'd, I'd honestly give, give it a change. And I heard obviously and, and kind of reading stuff on Twitter that Forrest did, you know, okay in terms of not conceding seven or eight, like you said on um, on was it Wednesday night for the for the Wolves game Tuesday night. So um, so yeah, I'd. I'd change it. Why not? Because Forrest is struggling at the moment and who knows, kind of one change could could lead on to something else. Yeah, I suppose that's one thing that Bree Samba's not really had that proverbial kick up the backside since he joined Forrest. So, you know, he's had Murich, um, uh, Diallo and Jordan Smith yeah. to push. So having someone, <laughs> Diallo, bloody hell, um, having someone like um, Orvath at the club is... Um, you know, going to be really beneficial to kick up Samba on. Uh, Analytics Forest, my NFFC pod co-host. Will we have a shot on target on Saturday? That is the question of all questions. Um, do you think a change of formation tactics may work? Do you reckon he will change his formation going to this one? Or do you reckon he will just stick with what he knows? Because he's, it, I, I think I know the answer to that. But what what formation would you potentially want to see him try if he was going to? Oh, I mean... I'm not a football manager, but I quite like I quite like the classic four four two. People disagree with me because Forrest have tried two strikers before and it's never worked. But I think especially with a young team and, and, and young hungry players, that might change. I think that's one thing with Hewton is it is stubbornness and he's not willing to change things. It's a little bit like for the cup game. That's why I think people were more frustrated than anything. Was you know he's given these young players a, a chance, but let them go for it. Let them go wild and almost just go for it. You know, and if Forrest lose. Three or four nil, like we did, but we'd really gone for it and we'd been attacking. I think you know a, a, a lot of Forest fans would have been a little more, a little bit happy. Obviously, it wasn't you know Forest weren't aiming to get further really in the Carabao Cup, and we expected a, de a defeat against Wolves. But it would have been nice if he'd have gone for it. And it's a little bit like Derby on Saturday. I think with a young team is that you want to play attacking football, and that's why if we lose on Saturday and Hewton does go. 
And I think we need to look to get a young manager and a lot of calls for Chris Wilder. I think I think that doesn't change much, to be honest with you. Yes, he might be proven, but Forrest tried proving managers every year and, and we're in the same situation. So giving it to someone young um, with with the kind of young squad we've got and, and if we're going to rely on academy players, and that's the difference. If we're not going to make many more signings, we've got to rely uh, on, on the academy players. I know someone's just put there, Michael Appleton. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I, I think he'd be a decent... A decent candidate for the job. So, um, so, 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 yeah. I, I think in terms of kind of formation, he'll play on 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 Saturday. He'll probably stick with what he knows. But ideally, I'd like Forrest to really go for it and, <laughs> and put two up top. But it's probably not going to happen, George. No, realistically, it may not. Yeah, Michael Appleton. Uh, I've I've told my friends and Chris and Liam on the pod. I love Michael Appleton. I think um, watching him at Lincoln last season, you know, everything that Forest really lacking the minute, you know. And someone said here, um, there's nothing wrong with the formation; it's the tactics. And to be fair, I am inclined to agree with that in some way. I don't yeah, think, I agree. Also, but they just don't. For me, they don't progress the ball quick enough from. Um, you know, Yates and Colback or Yates and Garner. Hopefully, that changes to the front man. Um, let's go then. So, to rounding off. We've already touched on the prediction, but you said two three nil derby. Um, I suppose you're rounding off. Really, is there any way back for Chris Hewton if they do lose this weekend? Can you see uh, any benefit of the doubt that they might back him and just say, right, he needs a full window, give him the international break to work with his new signings, or is it a no way back from if they do lose it? I'd be surprised if he didn't go. But then also, I was I, I said on uh, when kind of walking out. Uh, against Stoke on Saturday that I'd surprised if he was still here for, for the Derby game. So who knows? And, and uh, I, I mean, I, I kind of, I, I know there's a few rumours and, and going around on Twitter and obviously never kind of believed them, but there's the, there's some rumours that Forrest can't really afford to let Hewton go and that the more hoping he walks. Um, but I don't think Chris will walk. I, I think he's kind of the manager, probably not the manager to do that. Uh, so, yeah. I'd be shocked if he was still here for the international break. If Forest lose against Derby, I mean, they potentially even a draw against Derby. And if we play kind of badly against Derby, then again, I won't be surprised if he went then. But anything but a point, I think he's definitely got to go, in my opinion. Whether he will, I don't know. I'd be shocked if they keep him. Forest have sat managers for a lot less than this um, in different regimes. I can remember Sean O'Driscoll where he went, which was just, I mean, I think we should have just kept him. I, think it could we, you know hindsight's a wonderful thing I know it was a few years ago but Forrest could be sat in a different position now if we <laughs> kept him honestly um so and it's the same way with Karanka as well and, and you know Karanka was forced out or potentially walked but I think you know Forest managers have got sat for kind of a lot less than than what Hewton's um been like and, and obviously football is a results driven business so if Forrest lose against Derby, you've got to realise we'll be so many points adrift and if other teams are starting to pick up points, we're going to be in a relegation battle if we don't change things soon. One or two more games and, and if we and if we lose both, let's say we lose against Derby, is it uh, Middlesbrough or Cardiff when we come back? Uh, I think, I think I honestly think, and I fear for Forest, um, fear for Forest safety really and I honestly think it will be survival for the rest of the season and saying that now, I mean, that's shocking mm. to say really considering at the start we thought it would be a nice maybe mid-table finish. So, um, yeah, but who knows, George? I, I reckon Hewton will definitely go. But that, in my opinion, that's definitely in terms of if, if I was on the hierarchy, I'd obviously have got rid of him. But in, in terms of whether the hierarchy will back him, it's a question that we really don't have the answer to. It promised to be an interesting day across the yeah. A52. Uh, yes, I'll be there. So make sure you stay tuned to my Twitter and Football League World for all the content. Max, you'll be there on Saturday? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll be there. Max on YouTube. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely tune in as well. Lovely. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. Thank you for all your comments today at uh, 2.40. We have the London Roundup show of George Douglas, uh, Ned Holmes and Billy Mully elsewhere. Um, there's episodes tomorrow with the betting show and the weekend preview. Max, thank you very much for joining me. Um, thank you, George. Let's, let's hope that um, Forest fans can have something to shout about on Saturday and uh, Chris Hewton lives to uh, live another day. So thank you very much for watching and uh, take care.